Now that we have the high level view of an income statement, let's go through and talk about some of the line items in Southwest's income statement and see if we can do just a little bit of analysis on their business. And we're not going to go through all of these, but I want to point out some interesting things uh, relevant to the airline business. So uh, let's look at their revenue section. It's really pretty simple. They get their revenue from three sources. Uh, passengers, so that's their main business, obviously. They sell passenger tickets and they fly passengers, and $3.9 billion of the $4.1 billion comes from uh, ticket sales. They also carry some cargo around in, on their aircraft, and they take in $42 million of revenue from that. And then, actually, the interesting, the interesting line here is something called Other. And Southwest takes in $192 million of other revenue. And this this includes a lot of things, but it's generally what airlines consider ancillary sales. Things like baggage fees, change fees, liquor sales, things like that. Well, as you may know, Southwest's business model is they do not charge a lot of fees. So you you will see other airlines with a much bigger percentage of total operating revenue coming from other. So I went through and calculated this. This is 192 is 5 percent of total operating revenue for, for Southwest. If you were to look at other airlines, this this percentage would ge generally be bigger and in some cases uh, uh, like Spirit Airlines, which is sort of the other end of the spectrum in business models, they charge a lot of fees and, and low ticket prices, you'd see a very high percentage of total revenue coming from ancillary. So something to note here for, on Southwest. And the the Wall Street analysts have sort of two things to say about this. One is Southwest is leaving a lot of money on the table. They could uh, uh, make a lot more money for their shareholders if they were just implement some of these fees that are so common throughout the industry. The other view is, well, they're keeping their powder dry, right? They they don't want to charge these fees because they feel like that would be damaging to their brand. But if they ever need to, they have an awful lot of opportunity to increase this line. Uh, and they have such leverage because they have so many customers that they could improve their revenue really quite quickly if they needed to. So that's the revenue section. Again, it's pretty simple. Southwest really only does one thing. They, they fly customers, and their revenue model is uh, fairly simple from that perspective. Let's go down and look at some of the expect expense lines. And the first one to take note of is salary and wages. So a very large number, $1.1 billion of quarterly costs. So let's look at the, the total cost, the total expenses here for this quarter was just over $4 billion. $1.1 billion of that $4 billion went to paying salaries, wages, and benefits. So uh, the the cost of having employees. And I calculated this. This is 29%. So 29% of the cost of running the airline goes to paying their employees. The next one is even bigger, fuel and oil. And this is really what makes the airline industry unique is that $1.5 billion or 36% of all of their costs goes to one expense line, fuel and oil. That is really significant and of course why changing oil prices and change of fuel, changing fuel prices have such a big impact on the health of an airline because uh, there's such leverage there, right? A small percentage change in the price of fuel will have a large impact on the income of an airline. It's also really relevant when it comes to airlines who are in dire financial straits. And this is really not that relevant to Southwest uh, history, but certainly so many airlines over the last couple of decades have gotten into a situation that, where they've needed to cut costs. Well, if you're an airline, and you need to cut costs. You're going to look at your your expense lines, and you're going to say, "Where can I where can I reduce?" Well, fuel is uncontrollable. There are things you can do through hedging, but generally, you take the price that is given by the market, and there's not much you can do about it. So, 
36 percent of your costs your, are uncontrollable. Your highest cost item you can't do anything about. And even a lot of these other things are just the cost of doing business. So where do airlines generally go when they have to reduce costs in the short term? They go to labor because that's an area they can impact very quickly and it's a very large number. Uh, you know, airlines can lay off, uh, lay off employees, they can reduce benefits, they can lower wages very quickly, and that will have an impact on the bottom line in a very short order. So that's why it's important that airlines don't get into cost trouble because once they get into cost trouble it's very hard to address that particularly in the short run because the biggest area th that you can impact is your own people your employees and of course that is just a terrible way of managing your business so a good airline won't get in that situation and Air Southwest is a good airline uh, they have done a, a really good job of managing this cost um, some people would say that um, uh, not as good as they should, but you would you could compare this figure to other airlines, and uh, Southwest would be doing pretty good in this uh, in this good in this area. But this is really key. These two these two costs. What is that? Sixty five sixty five percent of the cost of running an airline and high cost, right? Four billion dollars a quarter. Sixty five percent of that go to two uh, expense items. Uh, the one other thing I want to point out in the expense area is this, oh, I'm sorry, not that, sorry, depreciation and amortization, and $224 million. And the reason I want to point this out is because when it comes to analysis, that is pretty important because that's a non-cash expense. So when you look at, at net income, excuse me, net uh, or operating income, you're looking at the cash from operate or the revenue from operations, the operating expenses, and then in here you have this non-cash expense. So you're su subtracting from your revenue a non-cash expense to coming up with your, to come up with your net income. So what what do I mean by a non-cash expense? Well, depreciation comes from capital assets that have been purchased in in prior periods or maybe even the current period, but for airlines, for example, they go out and buy airplanes for some very high cost. They issue debt or they buy them with cash. At the time of the purchase, that's not an expense. They're buying an asset. The asset gets expensed over time at, as the useful life of that asset runs out. So let's say the life of an airplane is, uh, is 10 years and they purchase it for $10 million. Every year they will expense one million dollars of that airplane's value on the income statement but the cash was incurred or the not not necessarily the cash the cost whether it was debt or cash was incurred in some other period so this is a an accounting adjustment to income and so when looking at at the income line uh, some some financial analysts will say well that's misleading to just how well the airline is doing uh, in this quarter because there's some non-cash items in here and they can actually be manipulated to make income look better or worse uh, in the current period. So let's continue down and look at uh, just a couple other things. The other expenses and income uh, lines, we're not going to talk too much about this, but this is interest on debt, some, uh, some interest that the airline might make from money in the bank, things like this. Uh, the, the key here is this section has little to do with the current operation of the airline. And that's why the focus from financial analysts tends to be tends to be in the operating area particularly for the current quarter when they want to assess how well management is doing at running the airline so this section up here the operating revenue and expense section is uh, an indication of the the revenue that the company is generating and the cost to produce the product to to sell that revenue, so the, the cost of sale. 
So you've taken a certain amount of money, it costs you a certain amount of money to produce the service that you're selling, and the difference is your operating income. And that tends to be what is viewed as the better measure of how management is doing running the the airline from quarter to quarter. Now certainly uh, the the expenses in this other area, the I lost my pen, oh there it is, the uh, you know, interest expense, debt service, things like that are very important at the end of the day. Net income is what matters in the long run. But from quarter to quarter, you tend to see more of the focus on operating income and op margin. 